This one's a, okay, this one. Because okay. I have a question more to you than to the lecture, but speaking about American uniqueness and the values that it stands for, that it stands for individualism, and the founding fathers have read uh, intellectuals that were proponents of the natural law, like John Locke. But I have a question about uh, history of ideas and how, do you, how you see that, because you say that uh, every religion is an enlightenment, and when we are enlightened, then we actually are... Uh, you know, putting individual first. But when you look at uh, history of ideas, well, you had Aristotle first when it comes to natural law, but then there was also late medieval period and St. Thomas Aquinas, and he was also, and he sort of introduced Aristotle to, to, to Western Europe, but it was way before enlightenment, and he was a Catholic saint. So do you see any positive preludiums to enlightenment before, or yeah, I mean, yes, I mean, there's no question that they, I, so we're talking about the period of the Enlightenment, which is like the 18th century, John Locke and Newton, all the way to the founding of America, really. Um, very little good happened after that, um, intellectually. But, yeah, I mean, the Enlightenment doesn't come out of nowhere. It has, it has roots. And its ultimate roots are Aristotle. But Aristotle disappears from Western thought for, what, 1,300 years or something like that. And he's rediscovered by Aquinas. And Aquinas is a genius. Aquinas is a one-of-a-kind, you know, once in a thousand years kind of genius. And Aquinas is struggling because he's a Catholic, but he's also reading Aristotle. And Aristotle makes a lot of sense to Aquinas. And he's going, but how do I resolve this with Christianity? And he doesn't, in the end, really resolve it. But what he does is he gives respectability to the idea of the secular, the idea of human reason, the idea even of the pursuit of individual happiness on this earth. Because that's, that's Aristotle, right? To achieve eudaimonia in this earth, to achieve human flourishing. It, it, Aquinas gives it respectability and embeds it into the Catholic Church, which means that from then on, the Catholic Church can't reject it. It, it, it struggles with it. And from that, all the Renaissance happens uh, 200 years later. And in the Renaissance, are further discoveries of Aristotle and of Greek culture now. Now they see the sculptures and the plays and the architecture. And they go, whoa, what have we lost for two, you know, 1,200 years? Where were we? Do right? you know that they had indoor plumbing in, in Rome? There was indoor plumbing. They had faucets with, with pipes that have water. And then it was gone. It disappeared. From, you know, and they used to have tall buildings. And then, and then we got to the point where in the West we couldn't build more than two stories during the Middle and Dark Ages, right? And then we had to rediscover all that. So they're rediscovering all this stuff. And you remember that, that dome in, um, in, in uh, Florence where they can't finish it because they don't know how to make a dome. Now, the Romans had built domes bigger than the dome there, but they didn't know how to do it. And they had to wait until a genius architect, I forget his name, Brunelleschi came around and said, this is how you do it, right? But they didn't know how to do it. They couldn't figure it out. Even though the Romans had big, much bigger domes earlier, we lost knowledge, huge quantities of knowledge, and we slowly rediscovered them. And we discovered them, and then we started discovering science in spite of the Catholic Church, who burnt at the stake people who did disagreed with it or put Galileo under house arrest. And then finally, we discovered science, and now we can understand the world, and only then can you get an enlightenment. Only then can people say, aha, reason is efficacious. Reason can really tell us about the world. Aristotle makes sense. And then you get Locke and the French Enlightenment and the Scottish Enlightenment and the founding of America and the just explosion of science that happens in the 18th and 19th century. Just an explosion. You think about the amount of knowledge we gained in those 200 years exceeds all the knowledge in the whole 100,000 years previously. On the other hand, is it really so black and white? Because somebody could argue that, I mean, Aquinas had the luxury to study Aristotle and write all these books uh, because of Catholic Church. Yeah, the Catholic Church that made us all poor, that destroyed civilization, that destroyed the Roman Empire. Yes, that Catholic Church then allowed, thank God, Aquinas to actually have a little bit of spare time to study Aristotle, yes. So after they decimated Western civilization and destroyed it, the, yeah, okay, so they gave him a little bit of time, good for them. No, I mean, no, the Catholic Church gets no credit. 
it gets huge negative credit. It is a force for destruction in human history. I'm sorry, I know you guys are Catholic, but that is a fact. Uh, you know, Rome was doing fine. And when it turned Christian, it was the end of Rome. Now, Rome was already pretty decadent before that, so it was on decline already. But you guys really nailed it in the heart. And there's nothing good, nothing good from a civilizational perspective it happened in Catholic Europe between 400 when Rome falls and, and, and the Renaissance, with the exception of Aquinas discovering what he discovered, making possible the Renaissance. So it's the anti-Catholicism of Aquinas. It's the Greek pagan influences that saved the West. This is from a pagan Jewish atheist. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs>